Hey everybody, hope you guys are all healthy and safe. So this is the Huawei Mate X2. I've been using it as my daily driver for the past week now. This is without a doubt the most cutting edge smartphone hardware in the world right now. But it's also very expensive and it has some software limitations that will make the phone quite hard to use, not just for people in the West, but also people in Hong Kong, in Tokyo, in Singapore. So it's quite tough to evaluate this device unless you look at everything in a vacuum. But I'm gonna try anyway. So this is my full review of the Huawei Mate X2. Okay, because this is a full review, I feel like I have to go over all the hardware specs again, like screen resolution, processor, the hinge, all that. But I think most of you guys watching this already know all that, so if you don't want to sit through all the rundown of the hardware specs again, feel free to go ahead and skip this part and jump to this time right here. Okay, so the main selling point of the Huawei Mate X2 is obviously this display. It is an 8-inch OLED panel with a resolution of 2200 by 2480 and refreshes at 90 hertz. So these numbers aren't the highest numbers around. There are screens out there with more pixels and with 120 hertz refresh rate, but it still looks pretty good to my eyes and animations still look pretty fluid. Not as insanely zippy as a 120 hertz panel on say an Oppo Find X3 Pro or a OnePlus 8 Pro, but 90 hertz is good enough. Basically, I, if I could take 120, I'll take 120. But if you give me 90, I'm okay. I'm not gonna complain too much about it like I would a 60 hertz panel. So whether it's viewing angles or maximum brightness, both are satisfactory. As you can see right now, I'm under the sun. You can still see the screen relatively well. The crease is really hard to notice. If you do push it extreme, like right now you can see the crease, but for the most part, you're looking at it straight on or even off to the side you don't see that crease. So this has been one of the most talked about areas of improvement over the Z Fold 2, uh, whose crease is quite noticeable as soon as you tilt the phone a little bit to the side. On the Mate X2, like you have to really look for the crease before you can see it. To be honest, the crease of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 doesn't bother me too much because like I said, if you look at the phone straight on, you don't really see it. So you really only see it if I move to the side like that and who uses a smartphone like that. So even though the Mate X2 improves over the Fold 2 as far as the crease goes, it's actually not that big a deal to me. Instead, the bigger improvements, the improvements that I actually find very valuable is when the Mate X2 is folded like this. I already mentioned it in a previous video, but I like the Mate X2 more in the Fold 2 when it's folded because the screen is wider. It's a more traditional smartphone aspect ratio, 25 by nine, this is a 6.5 five inch display with a resolution of 1160 by 2700. So it's a really good looking screen, also 90 hertz panel. And when you're using this phone, you feel like using a traditional smartphone. Now compared to Z Fold 2, the screen's 25 by nine aspect ratio makes it quite narrow. And when you try to type, it can be difficult if you have fat fingers. And also certain apps will look a little bit weird because it's so tall and narrow. So just all around, you get a more traditional smartphone experience right here. On top of that, you'll notice this little border on the Fold 2, it's much wider than it is on the May X2. The May X2, the bezels are quite uniform. Whereas on the Fold 2, the left side right here is noticeably chunkier. That's not all. The corner of the hinge right here of the Fold 2 is also a little bit sharp. You see, it comes into this little angle, angular point. Now, it doesn't hurt. It's not super uncomfortable, but when I hold the phone, I do feel the point poking on my thumb every single time. But when I hold a May X2, I don't feel that because Huawei has rounded the same corner. So when you're holding this phone, other than the fact that it's a little bit thicker than usual, it really does feel like you're holding a traditional slap phone. The phone is rounded on this side and this side, and like I said, no rough corners right here. Now there are a couple areas where the Fold 2 hardware is still superior. For example, the inside screen refreshes at 120 hertz. It's only 90 hertz on the Mate X2, and the hinge stays at any angle um, a little bit more firmly, like more steady compared to the Mate X2. You see it's quite set right now. On the Mate X2, you can have it stay open at any angle too, but it feels a little bit loose. Now about the size of the Mate X2, when it's folded, it measures 14.7 millimeter in thickness and about 295 grams in weight, which is about 0.6 pounds. So yeah, it is a little bit heavier than a traditional slab phone. 
I find that if I am holding it for over 15 minutes, my hand does get a little bit tired. Now inside the Mini X2 is a Kirin 9000. This is a five nanometer chipset with a 5G modem built into the chip. Phone has eight gigs of RAM and a 4,500 milliamp hour battery inside. As for storage, you get either 256 or 512 gigs of RAM. All right, now let's talk about camera performance. So in an earlier video, I said the Mate X2's camera system is the exact same system used in the Huawei P40 Pro Plus and the Mate 40 Pro Plus. I was actually off by a little bit. While the main and periscope zoom lens is still the same sensors as those other cameras, the ultra wide angle lens here is actually a little bit weaker. I'll get to that in a bit, but let's look at the other cameras. So the main camera here is a 50 megapixel lens, f1.9 aperture with the largest image sensor size on the market right now at one over 1.28 inch. So the larger the image sensor, the more light you can pull in. This lens also uses an RYYB filtering array that also makes it more sensitive to light. So in short, the main camera here, just like the main cameras on the last few previous Huawei flagships, can basically see in the dark. So even in a pitch black room, you just have to point and shoot. Don't even need to turn on night mode and you're gonna get a shot that you can, may not be the best looking shot, but you can at least see what's in that room. And in a less extreme case, if you're just shooting at night, out in the city with proper lights, you're gonna get a shot that has excellent dynamic range and just very contrasty colors. All the lights are balanced. Now during the day, I don't love the color science of the main camera, but that's my personal preference. Whether or not you like the color science of a Huawei phone during the day is up to you. Now as for the periscope zoom lens, this is an eight megapixel periscope zoom lens that can shoot 10 times optical zoom shots. I've tested this camera already and it is neck and neck almost as good or perhaps as good as the 10 times zoom lens on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. That means this is among at least, if not the top, the second best zoom lens on the market right now. It's better than the zoom lens in the iPhone for sure and better than the zoom lens on any other Android phone. Now there's a second zoom lens right here. This is a 12 megapixel telephoto zoom lens that can shoot three times optical photos. This focal length is about 70 millimeter, um, equivalent to about three times zoom, which is ideal for portraits. Now the fact that you have a long zoom and a short zoom means the Mi X2 covers more of the focal length spectrum. Now let's get to the ultra wide angle camera. This is a 16 megapixel f2.2 lens and um, photos look fine if you are not picky about ultra wide angle camera, but this sensor is inferior to the ultra wide sensor used in the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, the Huawei P40 Pro, or the Huawei Mate 30 Pro. So the first problem is that this sensor doesn't have as, as many pixels as the other ultra wide angle camera, so shots don't come out as detailed. The second problem is that you'll see that the color temperature between the ultra wide angle camera and the main camera is actually a little bit different. So when you're taking two photos with the main and then the ultra wide, they look like they were taken with different sensors. This is a problem that previous Huawei phones did not have. In fact, if you watch my recent Oppo Find X3 Pro video, you'll know that I raved about that ultra wide angle camera a lot because the ultra wide angle shot and the main camera photos looked almost identical in details and color science, dynamic range, all that. Well, guess what? Huawei actually started that trend with the Mate 30 Pro. So it's a bit disappointing for me to see that the ultra wide angle camera here is taking a step back from the Huawei Mate 30 Pro. Anyway, here are some photo and video samples from the Huawei Mate X2. As you can see, if you're just talking about photos taken with the main camera, just standard 1X photos, everything looked great. If you're talking about 10 times zoom, they look sharp as hell. And video performance is above average. I wouldn't say it's the best, it's best solid. Now we're looking for food. Okay, now let's talk software. So the Huawei Mate X2 runs EMUI over an open source version of Android 10. Now for the most part, the phone runs like what you'd expect an Android to run, except some of the features from Android 11 are missing here. Now Huawei's EMUI does provide some nice touches like wallpapers that move, customizable always on display, 
and I like that you can double tap on the screen twice with your knuckle to grab a screenshot. Although I would only do that on the outside screen, not the inside softer folding screen. But overall, I can't say EMUI is my favorite version of Android. And I'm not just talking about the, the Google stuff, which I'll get to later. Even if this phone had Google, I would still like OnePlus's Oxygen OS or Oppo's Color OS better. I find the app icons to be a little bit outdated looking, not my favorite aesthetic. And one of my biggest complaints is that if you want to pull down a notification shade, you still have to swipe from the very top. If you swipe from the middle, you just get this um, system-wide search, which is a ripoff of iOS, and I just don't like it because smartphones nowadays are too tall to reach all the way to the top of the screen. If I want to pull down a notification shade, I can't do that right now unless I and I loosen my grip and do this. Every other Android skin out there, whether it's Samsung's One UI, OnePlus's Oxygen OS, Oppo's Color OS, LG software, they all let you pull down the notification shape by swiping anywhere. I also don't like that if you want to lock the phone, turn off the screen, you have to press the power button. Whereas once again, every other phone on the market now gives you the option to double tap on the screen to turn off. Double tapping to turn off, it's just easier than reaching for the power button every single time. That's just facts. Okay, because you have such a large screen, you're gonna wanna multitask. And the good news is multitasking is really intuitive. So you just need to have one app open, then swipe from the side and hold, then you'll bring up this little menu. And from here, you can just tap the icon, drag it here, and you'll have split screen mode. And then if you want, you can tap on this bar at the top of the second app, bring it out here like this, and then you can have this app open in a floating window and the floating window can be moved and it can be resized so you can make it larger or smaller this has been very useful and intuitive for me okay now let's talk about the limitations so as you know the huawei may x2 cannot run core google apps so this includes youtube google drive google keep google docs google pay and a couple other google apps are missing however I think the degree to which this phone is limited has been a little bit overstated and I think some people don't quite understand what apps can't run on this phone because a lot of times I'll get comments saying, oh, how do you have Gboard running on a Huawei phone? Or how do you have Instagram running? Well, Instagram can run on this phone fine. Instagram is not banned at all. Neither are Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp. These apps can all run on this phone without any issues. The only apps you can run, like I said, is Gmail, Google Pay, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Keep. Now, as far as Google Pay, Google Drive, Google Docs, there's just nothing you can do. You can't use those apps no matter what you do. However, for some apps, there are workarounds. So Google Maps, you can actually install on this phone and you can still use Google Maps fine, except you cannot log in. So that means you can't save your location history, you can't save your search history. But if you wanna navigate, you can still do so. Same with Gmail. So the Gmail app cannot run on here, but this phone supports Microsoft Outlook and Gmail runs fine in Microsoft Outlook. So the software limitations are not as crazy as some people think. You can still run WhatsApp, WeChat, Instagram, Twitter, Netflix, Spotify, all those stuff run fine here. Anyway, let's talk about battery life. So there's a 4,500 milliamp hour battery in here and battery life on this phone is really, really good because you have to remember, this is only a 90 hertz panel. So it doesn't eat up as much battery life as a 120 hertz panel like you would get on an S21 Ultra. So for me, I've been finishing entire 12, 13 hour days with still 30, 40% battery life left. Overall performance, obviously no issue. The phone is very snappy. Playing games on this is fine. Some games will cut off the top and sides, but I find most games to be fine. And if you really don't want your game to be cut off at all on sides, there is a setting to run the app in 100% scale, but then you'll just get black bars on the left and right side, otherwise known as pillar boxing. Oh yeah, the Mayx 2 has stereo speakers too. By the way, that's me on the drums right now. So these are my friends. Let's test out the sound. So overall, I love the Huawei Mix 2. For those of you guys who follow my work, you know that I have been a believer of foldable phones since day one. Now, I can see that not everybody has a use for a foldable phone. If you live a lifestyle that's more, you're tied to an office job nine to five, and then when you're off work, you don't really need to, to do work anymore. You just have a 
very good work-life balance, then maybe you don't need a foldable phone. But for someone like me, I am an independent tech reviewer. Not only do I make videos, I write for multiple publications. So for someone like me, I constantly have work coming in at all hours of the day. It doesn't matter if it's a Sunday or like a Friday night, maybe I'll get an email saying, hey, there's a press release I need to read or edit. Then if that's the case, I like being able to just pull something on my pocket. I have a large screen. I can immediately do work on an eight inch display. It's just, it's a lot easier than doing work on a 6.2 inch display. I can see more, I can have more apps open at once. I can have two documents open side by side as I'm proofreading, which I have to do quite a lot. I have to send long emails a lot and the fact that I can type on a larger screen with a split keyboard makes things a lot easier. Now, can I recommend the Mate X2 for most people? Of course not. This phone retails for US $2,700, 2,700 American dollars and you can't even buy that at this price for now. If you wanna buy this phone right now, you have to pay closer to $3,500. I mean, $3,500 is just too much money for like 90, 95% of people out there. I get that. But there are people who are tech enthusiasts. So someone like me, I've always been into gadgets. Ever since I was a teenager, I would spend all my money that I make from my part-time jobs on like MP3 players, like laptops, stuff like that. So for someone like me who's a tech enthusiast and also I review phones for a living, I can justify spending that money. But I know 99% of people out there cannot spend that money and that's fine. So anyway, that's about it for this review of the Huawei Mate X2. It's not a phone for everybody, but you have to respect what Huawei has done with the hardware here. This is bleeding edge stuff, man. So that's it for this review. I have a lot more content coming up, including a video on the Vivo X60 Pro Plus. That's the global version and some Xiaomi phones too. So if you're interested in keeping up to date with all the latest gadgets, please subscribe to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.